everyone, my name is Aranga, I'm part of the data science discovery team and in this video today we will be doing a question on um, hypothesis testing and procrastination specifically with uh, a two-sided one sample z-test for means. So let's go ahead and get started. So here it says that uh, Ruby often finds herself procrastinating from on homework. She's curious whether her actual completion rate is significantly different from the average completion rate among her friends, which is 13%, right? So 13% is kind of like the claimed um, completion proportion, right? To investigate this, she decides to sample 47 of her homeworks and observe that she completed 10 of, 10 of them, right? So that's um, the data from the sample, right? So is this evidence strong enough to conclude that her completion rate is significantly different from the average, right? Assume that we are dealing with proportions and assume that our completion can be modeled, um, you know, basically as a proportion, right? So here we're checking, is our um, completion rate different from the average, right? So whenever you hear the different, the word different, immediately that means that we are dealing with a two-sided test, right? And it's two-sided test because um, it's it's there's no one one side, right? It, it's two-sided. It can be completion rate that is less than the average, or it can be a completion rate that is greater than. We don't know. Um, we're just seeing if it's different, right? So here, when we go ahead and the first thing we do is write our null and alternate um, hypothesis. The first thing here is that we are dealing with proportions, right? So here we're basically going to use p as a population parameter. Whenever we deal with means, it's going to be mu, and whenever de we deal with proportions, it's going to be p. So here, our null hypothesis is that p, the basically the um, completion rate among her friends, is going to be 13%, right? So P equals 0 0.13. And here we're seeing if her um, completion rate is significantly different. So the alternative hypothesis, what we're trying to find out in this hypothesis test is if P is different or not equal to 0 0.13, right? So this is basically our two hypotheses. And notice that we don't use p hat, right? You might know or you might notice that when we're dealing with a hypothesis test for proportions, um, we're, we use symbols such as p and p hat, right? So p is for the population parameter and p hat represents a sample statistic, right? So it's basically the data you get when you collect your sample. p hat is like an approximate um, uh, an approximate proportion, basically, right? So, so here I just want to go ahead and go on to my question and basically write that we're dealing with a, um, we said two-sided, one-sample z-test, right? Because it's it's not one-sided because there's no specific direction specified, and then here our correct null and alternative hypothesis is that p is equal to. 13 versus HAP is not equal to 13. Um, since we're dealing with percentages here, uh, you know, we wrote 0 0.13, but since they want it as a percentage, we're just doing 13 versus not equal to 13 and not including those decimal points there, right? So and you want to go ahead and look at the question, right? Since everything is um, expressed as percentages, you want to make sure that you use whole numbers instead of um, percentage signs for your proportion, for your hypotheses. And now all it's left to do is compute the test statistic, right? So what is our z going to be in this case? Was well, the formula for calculating the test statistic for proportions is just p minus p hat. And this is very similar to the actual formula for calculating the z-score, right? So it's just, sorry, it's just p hat minus p, right, in a z-score, it's, it's usually x minus mu divided by your standard deviation. It's kind of similar to proportions, where our p hat is our sample statistic, um, and then p is kind of our um, population parameter of like our entire average proportion, right? And then for our standard error, we want um, uh, to use our population parameter. So it's going to be p times 1 minus p divided by n, and you're just going to square root that whole thing, right? So it's going to be, um, it says here that our p hat is going to be 10 out of 47, right? And here is where you kind of want to calculate p hat is going to be 10 out of 47. It says she completed 10 out of 47 homeworks, right? So you can go ahead 
and just use that fraction. So it's going to be 10 over 47 minus 0 0.13 divided by, and then here it's going to be 0 0.13 times 1 minus 0 0.13 divided by n, which is 47, right? So that's going to be your z-score. Um, and you can go ahead and actually do this in Python, right? Since we have access to the coding interface. So let me just define my variables first. So I'm gonna have my p hat is equal to 10 divided by 47. My p was equal to 0 0.13. And my z-score or my z-test statistic is basically p hat minus p. And then let me make another variable for my standard error really quick. So it's gonna be square root of p times 1 minus p divided by um, n, which is 47. And then my z uh, test statistic is our p hat right minus p divided by our standard error. So when I print out z, I, um, my resulting test statistic is basically is one point around 1.6872 right so i can go ahead and directly type that in there which is correct so that means um that's like the test statistic that we're dealing with right so it was around 1.687 now we want to see now it's um calculating the p-value right so if we kind of visualize this problem right what does this look like um, this is the bell curve we're, we're dealing with, right? Our z-test statistic, if this is a z-value of 0, then 1.687 should be around here. And we want to see if our completion rate is significantly different from the average. So since this is a two-sided, we're looking at the positive z-test statistic as well as a negative one, right? So this is negative 1.687. And kind of the two sides that we're dealing with here will be the blue shaded areas, right? So when we calculate the p-value, it's basically the probability, right? So it's the area under the curve. So we want to go ahead and calculate the total probability of these two shaded blue regions, right? And how we do that, first of all, is, is going to be using our norm.cdf function, right? So remember that norm.cdf um, is, you know, given a z-score, calculate the probability um, or that occurs to the left of the bell curve, right? So, so here we basically want to use norm.cdf to calculate this left tail, right? Um, which is going to be this first shaded area. So it's going to be norm.cdf of negative 1.687 um, plus, right? Because there's two sides, so you can just add basically this twice, right? Because these um, two tails are symmetric, right? So you can actually just multiply this whole thing by two. So hopefully that makes sense, right? You know that these two are going to be symmetric regions. So we just want to calculate this tail and just multiply that by two. So that's going to be our p value. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So p is going to be norm.cdf of z and then finally multiplying that by two. So that's going to be around 1.9. So let me just go ahead, sorry, uh, norm.cdf of negative z, right? Because we want the negative um, z test statistic. So that's going to be 0 0.09, which makes more sense. Let's go ahead and type that in here, right? And finally, that's making our conclusion, right? So here, this is going to be uh, 0 0.09156, 0 0.09156. So what does the p-value actually represent? So as we mentioned before, it is a probability, right? It's the probability that you observe a um, proportion that is at least as extreme as or more extreme than the one observed in our sample given the null hypothesis was true, right? So this probability here is around 9%, right? So it's 9% it's chance that you're going to observe something that you like a proportion that we observed in this sample or something more extreme than um, the one observed that probably given the null hypothesis is true that probability is around nine percent so our alpha level here is 0 0.01 right we can see here that our p-value of 0 0.09 
around 0.0915 is greater than our alpha level of 0.01. What does that mean? Well, this means that our test result is basically not significant enough, right? This p-value is not low enough. This probability is not low enough. That means that basically we, we fail to reject our null hypothesis, right? Because fail to reject our null hypothesis because this is not enough convincing evidence to prove that you know our completion rate is significantly different from the average right this um, probability is is so large it's it's pretty large that we can't attribute this to the fact that the null hypothesis is not true right we may have gotten like a lucky result or we may have gotten you know this result out of chance basically right the probability of of nine percent is not low enough to to determine that our uh, null hypothesis is false, right? So we basically reject our null hypoth fail to reject our null hypothesis, um, and and you know we don't really say in statistics that we accept the null hypothesis, right? Because you're never you're never one hundred percent sure, right? You're only um, sure as sure as your significance level, right? So we say we fail to reject the null hypothesis just because our p-value actually is not high enough and you know we may have gotten lucky in this time so we basically fail to reject um our null our null hypothesis so our conclusion basically is that um you know it's always good to write the conclusion in context right so is this evidence strong enough to conclude that our completion rate is significantly different well no right so conclusion is that our um, completion rate is not significantly different than, um, I guess, than the average, right? Than the average, which was 0 0.13 or 13%, right? So basically, in other words, it's saying that our completion rate is 13%. So let's go ahead and select this, right? So we failed to reject um, the average procrastination rate and conclude there's not enough evidence supporting the completion rate is different than, uh, than, than 13%, right? And that is correct. So that's basically, you know, what we said here. Basically, we don't have enough convincing evidence, right? So to conclude, basically, that uh, our basic conclusion is that our si completion rate is not significantly different than the average. So hopefully um, this video was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you next time. Bye.